How the excellent Manfrotto and Magic Arm helps me with my construction photography. Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rick McAvoy. Yes, I'm down on my knees on the floor because I'm showing you this thing here. This is the Manfrotto Magic Arm. Canon 6D, tripod thread there. I clamped there, which I just clapped onto this because this is a similar thickness to a piece of structural steel which I was attaching to the other day. And if I wanted a photo, clamp, focus, self timer. Now that was a two second self timer, so I didn't put you through the 10 seconds on this video. <laughs> Normally I do 10 seconds to let the camera settle because the point is I want the camera nice and steady because I'm taking three photos at once. But it's the movement that I like. I can turn it round, point straight down. Job done. And instead of the stool, I have quite literally attached my camera to a steel column on a building that was being constructed. Now you can see some examples of the photos I've taken and the setup in the flesh. I can't record videos like this on a live construction site because, um, well, <laughs> well, I'll get endless, um, well, Mickey taking, shall we say, if I record myself on a construction site talking into my camera. I will get comments made and also there isn't really time and I don't want to get in people's way because when you're working on construction sites, you've got to be quick. But this thing here, I was doing an experiment, which I might talk about on a future episode, where I was doing five stop auto bracketing. Five stops, that's five stops underexposed, five stops overexposed, one stop apart. So that's 10 photos in total, plus correct exposure in the middle, that's 11 photos. Now this was an experiment just to see how far I can push bracketing. And I needed a stable platform for my camera. Now the photos that I wanted, and this is one of the main points I want to get over here, I couldn't use a tripod. When you're on a construction site, tripods can be a challenge. They get in the way. And you don't really, quite often, you don't have the camera where you want it. That's where this thing comes in, the Manfrotto magic arm. No, I'm not being paid to say that. Well, <laughs> I'm not being paid to say anything at the moment, at the time of recording this and the time of writing my blog post. But you never know, at some point in the future, Manfrotto might snap me up and pay me a king's ransom to promote their products. You never know, we live in hope, don't we? So the blog post published today, same day as this video, which I'm recording on a, well, it's not raining at the moment, which means it's about to start raining as an email comes in from all the Chartered Institute of Building. Did I tell you I'm professionally qualified in construction as well as photography? Well, that email just reminded me. I just want to give you the answer a bit from my blog post. The Manfrotto Magic Arm allows me to securely clamp my Canon 6D and Canon 17-40mm to lens to building elements including structural steelwork, enabling me to take tack sharp bracketed sequences of photos of construction sites. It's still there by the way. The Manfrotto Magic Arm is used in locations where it is not possible to use a tripod, helping me to take photos from unique viewpoints and angles. And that's the point. See, still sat there quite happily and hopefully <laughs> it's not going to fall off during this video because that's not going to be a very good product promotion, is it? No, we're looking good. And I like the stool, there's a steel column analogy. But basically on a steel column, you've got the normally an eye shape, so you've got the web sticking out. Clamp it onto one of those, that's obviously not going anywhere. And it means you can get, you can clamp high up and you can get forward and into the building and you get a different view that you'll never get with a tripod. Sure, you can do it handheld, but if you're, when you get inside a construction site being built, you can get some dark bits in there that you need to catch. So you need a camera to be dead still if you're doing bracketing like me. And I'm doing bracketing so I can underexpose and get the detail in the shadows. And I took it to the stuff on the overexposed one and hey ho, we have a magically created photo. So what else do I want to say? Well, just check out the blog post at rickmacavoyphotography.com. That's the best thing to do because it's a very good post written this morning and it's based on some very real experiences on a live construction site. 
So on my blog, on my YouTube channel, I talk about what I do. So I'm teaching you the practical side of things from the sharp end of being a photographer working on construction sites. Now, I, only, I don't only work on construction sites. I do photograph other buildings and, yeah, I take the odd holiday photo as well. The odd snap. <laughs> Sorry, I hate it. There's somebody who refers to my photo as snap just to wind me up. So why not shoot handheld? Well, like I say, if I'm up here leaning forward and it's dark in the shadows, I can, sure I can push my ISO to like 3,200 or 6,400 to get a decent shutter speed, but I'm gonna get noise in the shadows and I don't want that. So I need the slowest, sorry, the lowest ISO with the, with the shutter speed that corresponds to giving the correct exposures, three of. So what I need to do is to make sure my camera's rock solid and I don't need to worry about it. So I can normally stick at an ISO of 100 even when it's quite dark and I'll still get sharp photos. Still sat there, it's not moved. Been there five minutes, perfectly happy. Just on a stool and it's sticking out a bit too. So there is a bit of, there is a bit of leverage on that, but rock solid and it'll stay like that for well, I don't know, I'm not gonna test it, am I? Maybe, <laughs> maybe I, I could test that with something less expensive than a Canon 6D. Yep, the cutting edge of cameras. Right, I think that's all I wanted to do. I want you to be aware that there is an alternative to a tripod. And when you want to get alternative viewpoints or you wanna get inside something to get a better shot, there are bits of gear that can help you. Oh, one thing I do wanna say, I have a rule with gear. I used to buy every and any piece of camera gear under the sun without exception, including this. And what I did was I'd buy gear because I thought I needed it and helped to take better photos. I'd use it once, not be too happy with it, then never use it again and chuck it in my garage. And that's where I found the magic arm. I was doing my auto bracketing thing. I wasn't happy with my tripod arrangement. I've tried a Joby Gorilla Pod. My phone's on it now, it's great for recording that, but it's no good when you're seven floors up on a building with some wind blowing around you and um, you're trying to get a 10 stop bracketed set of photos. So I was thinking, well, I've got a clamp somewhere in the garage and thankfully I haven't used it in a couple of years, would you believe? And it was in a toolbox that had a, a, a weatherproof seal on it, so it was all nice and dry and pristine in there. It actually, it looks, well, it did look like new up until I started using it when I rediscovered it a couple of months ago. And it helped me massively. So back to my gear thing. So I've got a rule about buying photography gear. I have a thing about photography gear. It says here, you should only buy gear in one of three circumstances. Easy for me to say. One, to replace something to replace something that you use that has broken. Two, to help you take better photos. Three, to help you take photos that you could not take without that bit of gear. And the Manfrotto Magic Arm very, very easily comes under two and three, making it absolutely justifiable and newly essential to me gear. So not saying buy the Manfrotto one, other clamps are available. Just be aware that there is an alternative to using a tripod or struggling. Get some kind of clamp, attach your camera to something solid and you're good to go. Right, I am done here. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. I'll get this published very, very soon. Before I go, I'd like to refer you to my blog, rickmacavoyphotography.com and also to my splendid Photography Explained podcast, which has its own website, Wait for it, photographyexplainedpodcast.com. I know, where do I come up with this stuff? Right, I'm done. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel and for giving me a bit of your time. And now the awkward bit when I press stop on the remote control and it doesn't stop the recording. It didn't stop the recording. Let's try again. <laughs>